and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Conishiro. Fremont is already home to the top public school districts in California. Fremont is also home to a leading provider of bilingual education for deaf students at all grade levels. The California School for the Deaf is an internationally renowned facility that has enjoyed a great success in creating a learning environment where deaf students thrive. Along with Ohlone College, one of the country's strongest programs at the collegiate level, the California School for the Deaf has paved the way for a flourishing deaf community here in Fremont. With us to discuss the school's program and services is the California School for the Deaf Superintendent, Dr. Sean Vernig, along with Dr. Thomas Holcomb, a professor at Ohlone College's Deaf Services Division. And here to assist us with the conversation is Patrick Kelly, courtesy of Purple Communications. And of course, our favorite co-host, Dr. Jim Morris. Thank you so much for being here. Now, we're first going to start off because I think a lot of people here in Fremont still don't know about the school for the Cali uh, California School for the Deaf. Can you give us a little history, how long you've been here? I mean, did you, where did you come from? Because I know you originated from back east, but can you tell us more? Sure. I'm actually from Minnesota before I came here. I graduated from the California School for the Deaf myself, so my, my wife Anne also grew up in in Hanford and came out here. Okay. She learned American Sign Language and as well for many other students we're proud to serve and their families as well. For CSD our first founder was in 1860 in San Francisco. Wow. We moved to Berkeley and then we moved here to Fremont in 1980. We've been here for almost 25 years so we were growing together because when we first moved here it was really pretty much farmland around here in Fremont yeah. as most of you remember mm -hmm. and I'm really proud to be here ever since then with the Fremont community. So did you attend the school, the Fremont location, when you were a student? Yes. Yes, I graduated from California School for the Deaf myself. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yes, I, I like, come around full loop. What I like to see is um, your old high school picture. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, I actually got that on the wall. There's pictures of all the seniors for the last 30, I believe it's 30 years, mm -hmm. maybe up to 100 years in the library. But it was starting with my tenure, I noticed that that was a point there that people were going in and looking at my high, high school classmates, and my picture's always there, so I know who's <laughs> around checking me out ever since. It's a great picture. Yeah. Love the hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so what services do you provide for your students? Okay, we serve from infancy to oh. work ready, okay. readiness. We have a work readiness program. We serve the school district for all of Northern California. As also, we have a sister school for the deaf in Riverside, Riverside, and they serve the school districts in Southern California. We provide support for the family. There's a, an all about access mm -hmm. to language, both English and American Sign Language, okay. for communication and also for language development. For families, uh, bonding as well. That's good. We also provide a comprehensive educational program with common core curriculum, just like all the other outstanding public schools here in Fremont. And we're all in the same boat with our same goals for the students here. Our college also provides for many students who move here, specifically for this school. My family moved here from New York to, to benefit from CSD's mm -hmm. school as well. I've got three deaf children. So all my children graduated from CSD. Nice. Now, so I'll, it's got a good number of families who are not from here. They're actually moving here specifically for the California School for the Deaf in Fremont. We attract top quality teachers as well and staff yes. members. Yes. So we're fortunate to have all those here on our team with us. That's great. Now I got a question. Because you have two campuses for the CSD here in Fremont and also in Riverside, if a family w needs help with housing or do you have dorms for the students to give the family time to move here or how does this work? Okay, there's two things. We would like to emphasize that we also have a residential program. It's called a student life for students who live far away and come and actually benefit from the 24-hour okay. uh, learning environment with full access to communication through language development, through peer-to-peer -peer interactions, also through social activities, athletics opportunities, okay. And also, we work with our excellent students, life faculty. Uh, they learn about life through incidental learning and all of that. And also, we have a strong community here ready to support when the families move here as well, providing all the resources. Good. Good. 
So we do support a diverse ways of getting in the school. So about what percentage of your students have families that live here in Fremont and what percent are residential students? Well, we have about about 50% that live actually and reside in the program and that's 50% from that are not from here. And it's really interesting because I think that that has an impact on the culture of Fremont mm -hmm. as a city when you have so many families and and you are out in the community and and students have the benefit of seeing here's another language that some students right. are using or knowing this is a part of our community I, I think makes a more welcoming environment um, is it, my observation yes definitely definitely and then how does that um, matriculation happen with Ohlone? What happens when students leave CSD? How, how have you built that strong partnership with Ohlone? Ohlone Deaf Program was established because of the School for the Deaf was right there. When we moved from Berkeley to Fremont, the Fremont community wanted to make sure that the community was here and it's ready for a large influx of deaf people mm -hmm. that, and signers. So the first thing Ohlone College did was set up a sign language class, sign nice. language classes. So now we've got one of the largest sign language programs in the nation. We serve about 600 students every year wow. teaching sign language. Okay. So that's you know, a reflection of Fremont's commitment, motivation, interest in integrating the deaf members of our community. So you're right on. We, we live here and I've lived here for 25 years, but it's a very comfortable place to live. The kids, the adults are so used to seeing deaf people around. So like you said, you get the yeah. sense of the whole community. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, is there a, a corollary relationship at Riverside with a community college or another institution in Riverside or is this um, CSD Ohlone like the model of excellence, how it should be? I'm competitive so I really <laughs> just want to be better than the other guys. No doubt about that, we do. We do check around each other and we do compete and we have good ways, we always want the best for the deaf children in California, so. Ohlone College is r unique and rare with the large number of deaf people in the program. You don't see that anywhere else, mm -hmm. really, other than Gallaudet University yeah. in yeah. Washington, D.C., yeah. and the National Technical Institute in Rochester in New York. So we do get some students from Riverside, California, who need community college education, so they do oh. come up here mm -hmm. okay. to benefit from what we have locally to offer. We also have probably 30 or 40 students from other countries that come here. Wow. There's not many opportunities for yeah. deaf students internationally for post-secondary education, so they do come here to Fremont to gain and benefit from our services and nice. our offerings. We're very proud to offer the same type of opportunities for campus through the youth at CSD, for example. Our programs really have the students coming in from other school districts, and it's a model for academic growth after exposure to our bilingual environment. So we're, that's what we're here for. Okay, I would like to ask a question about your relationship with the FUSD school district. How do you guys work together? How do you put programs in place? I mean, how does this all work and how long have you been doing it? For over 20 years, we've been working closely with Fremont Unified School District. We provide an infant program, a family visit program as well. Um, we work with them about their children th that are deaf and also their family members, how they can support and learn from each other and how they can become yeah. part of the community that we're talking about yeah. in this program. We also serve students from here in our own school district, starting with education, preparing for kindergarten access for success later in life. Okay. And I think probably one of the most important strengths of really the, the relationship and the partnership is for many families who have young children, when they find out that their child is deaf, being embraced by a culture, knowing, okay, here's another language, here's a way I can communicate, here's a way to be able to communicate with my child. I think the, the value of having CSD so close is it, 
it just provides us support for families that they wouldn't get another way mm -hmm. um, because it's okay welcome in you're part of us right. and and that's really important yeah particularly for parents of young children too yeah and and to also see there are these opportunities your child has every opportunity to succeed and graduate from college and get a great job and change the world um, is is such a comfort for families that that I think that's a great value of having mm -hmm. CSD so close to us in Fremont. Now I know sign language is taught at three of the high schools. Do you provide the teachers for these classes or are they FUSD teachers? How does this work? They're FUSD teachers. Okay. Um, Okay. And uh, some, our sign language programs are some of our most oversubscribed really? programs at our high schools now. Yeah. Wow. I had no um, idea. Yeah. Some of our high schools are having to limit, okay, you can't take the class until you're in 11th grade <laughs> because they have so many um, students wanting to take it. And, yeah. and finding really good quality instructors is tough. Now, what do you think the students come out of the class knowing about the, the um, deaf culture? Do you think they have a better understanding, empathy? How did you, would you have any feeling about what the students? Uh, I think probably all of those, uh, you know, knowledge of the language, number one, but also um, understanding of the culture and, and um, being able to connect in a, in a way that they couldn't before is probably the biggest benefit to mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? It's part of diversity as well. That's one of the beautiful things about Fremont. It's so diverse. <laughs> and, you know, deaf people in the community, we're just part of the fabric that's out there. It's not odd to be different here. Yeah, I know. And everyone yeah. in the community has something to contribute and offer in the deaf community. We have so much to offer. Like you're talking about families with newly identified infants. Often they're in shock or they're going through a grieving yeah. process. They've never met a deaf person before. And here in this area, there's so many positive role models. Yeah. It's just, you know, of all kinds. Yeah. CSD's got 75% 70, of their staff is deaf themselves, which is very uncommon. Hearing teachers who sign well, so it's a very, like you said, like Jim mentioned, it's a very positive environment. Yeah. So it's good for the parents to get over the grieving mm -hmm. quicker. Yeah. And it's right there and life goes on for them to see it, it's okay to be deaf as well. Yeah. yeah. And also f research continues to show that that type of environment that we have here in Fremont and CSD and Ohlone contributes to the brain development of the deaf children and that's valuable for language development to continue on to reading and so forth in their future. All of them, teachers understand that and embrace this by working together for deaf children. Mm -hmm. Now what are some of the opportunities of learning signing First of all, to me, it's an international language. You can go anywhere in the world and sign. And just looking at Patrick, there's another opportunity that you can, you know, sign for it at events or for TV shows. <laughs> but what other opportunities do you see that the language can bring to uh, a hearing person, you know, career-wise? Okay. We can always use good teachers, motivated work, to work with our students and their families. That's one of the things for sure. And also to become community members, becoming an interpreter and so forth, like you mentioned. I have to remind you, um, when students learn sign language, it's not international. Each country has oh. their own sign language. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, and sign language it doesn't relate to English. It's not the same as English. Right. It's a completely different language. That's why we offer it as a foreign language, because you really have to study the grammar, the syntax, uh, yeah. the vocabulary, all of that. So the benefit is that they're becoming multilingual individuals with that in the world is a very significant thing. Job opportunities are out there. Live in and among other people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of job opportunities out there today with sign language, really. I can think it's very important for us as well to be members of the Fremont community to continue sorry, the ecology of what we have here in Fremont. I think it's the best model of that concept mm -hmm. worldwide, really. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to pursue that. Yeah. And speaking of which, 
besides the typical curriculum of what you teach at the school, talk about the things that you do for fun. Like you do have your own television station that is shown internationally. And what other programs can um, deaf students can look forward to at your schools, both schools, at Ohlone and at CSD? Because it's not, not math, it's just not reading, it's just not science. What else, what fun stuff do you have? <laughs> Okay, at CSD, we do believe in the whole child mm -hmm. philosophy, which is why we always support all types of students in the programs, activities, top coaches, national championship teams, basketball, football, baseball, softball, cheerleading, all of them are way above. And mm -hmm. we started with soccer. And also, we have plenty of leadership opportunities for our students, specifically with our coaches of color and other marginalized groups. Mm -hmm. We have meetings on a regular basis to develop leadership skills in all groups. We look forward to having continuous reputation of leadership at a national level, international level, and we have success academically as well. We have students and hearing students that they live with out there, so it's, we have strong beliefs in that. CSD participates in the Fremont Unified School District from the elementary school intramural sports. Mm -hmm. so. Last winter, I believe it was, CSD got the championship, <laughs> really? women's championship. So we're very competitive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we like to be part of Fremont Unified School District as much as possible. What sport was it? Basketball? Basketball. Okay. <laughs> but not at the high school level because <laughs> it's too big. So CSD competes against private schools mm -hmm. and also, yes, correct. Elementary schools, we do play against the Fremont public schools. You're right. You know, I think the best thing about your school, sorry, the thing, you have theater, you have sports, you have cheerleading, you have a television station, you've got the regular, regular curriculum, you've got so many opportunities for your students to explore what their interests may be in the future, and that's what I think um, is the hidden gem of you guys. Um, so, and I think Ohlone also offers a lot of opportunities as well because everyone wants to try everything when they're small, right? And then they can grow from that. And I think that's just a wonderful opportunity that you're giving these students. Yes. I think that it's important for our students to have that internalized self-actualization as a person, be a strong mm -hmm. person with a strong identity, Mm -hmm. Self-concept, it's very important to the core. Mm -hmm. They have to develop that before we release them out into the rest of their lives. So we, that's what we really strive for. Yeah. Right, because I, I think the, the commonality that CSD and the district share, right, we have this understanding that, yes, we have to teach them to read, and yes, we have to teach them mathematics. Yes. And, yeah. and, but in addition to that, there's so much that children need just to become good citizens and good, decent folks when they grow up, that that is a responsibility that's shared between right. the school and the family. And I think the yes. beauty that you see with CSD is they oftentimes for families can be really that connection. You know, right. when you think about residential students, yeah, there's a lot of them I'd like to take home at night, and, and but they really, they have the dormitories and they have that 24-7 um, right. care. I think it's a, a awesome responsibility for the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do your older students get to stay on campus to be like, I don't know, dorm room captains or, or, or is it, are they only teachers or do you, how do you, how does this work? Okay, we do, they live on their own basically. Okay. They learn how to be independent. They have Good. to learn how to manage their time. They complete their homework on time, same as everybody else. <laughs> I wish my kids could do the same, you know, yeah. for free information. <laughs> um, that's really impressive for our mm -hmm. students to have and we impress that on our staff yeah. at CSD. It's all about engagement, complete engagement in the community. I think that's important for our students to have that sense of entitlement and also mm -hmm. that obligation right. to their part, do their part in the community. Mm -hmm. We've seen that on a daily basis. Yeah. I think KK was asking more about the like overnight care and right. supervision. Do you have former students, addition, other former students who come back and, and work at the school and help out? 
Yes, I'm one of them, for yeah. example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's interesting to have that perspective as a student and come back as a superintendent. Mm -hmm. It's really an interesting <laughs> experience for me that I've had in the last couple of years. It's a great, we've got a lot of great alumni that do work for us and work with us, with our students. They understand the value of our school, the mm -hmm. understanding of what we believe in, and that's why we're, you know, we have them come back to our school. That really helps with the quality of our program as well. And that may be part of that statistic that you cited about the number of um, staff members, 75% of the staff, I believe you said, were um, deaf themselves. And I, I think it may be that connection, right? Here was a place that I felt safe. Do you have staff members, other staff members who are now teachers at the school also? Yes, many of them. And that's the type of confidence that we yeah. really like to see in them and for them to exhibit in the classroom through direct communication with the students without the need for an interpreter. Yeah. Alonia, half of our students are CSD graduates. Half of them come from public schools elsewhere, uh -huh. all around them. And for those kids who come from other schools where often their first time seeing a deaf teacher, a Aww. deaf adult when they come to Ohlone College, uh -huh. often it's uh -huh. very isolated out there. Okay they may not know sign language when they come in. So we're very lucky. Yeah, they may have weak academic skills because of that they had, didn't have access. So they get here and it's really an eye-opening experience for many of them. Mm -hmm. You know, when you meet them, that many deaf people in the same place, well-educated people, people with opportunities beyond this. So it's a really powerful experience for yeah. a lot of people I who bet. come here from other, other, where, other places. How large is your student body? Which how one many students? Asking? Either, at, either oh. how many students do you have at your school? Okay, we've got about 450 students okay. at the School for the Deaf in Fremont, and we serve all of their families as well. Okay, and then at Ohlone, it's about 150 deaf and hard of hearing students, and then we have about 600 that sign language students. So we provide that to the community to, that they could become interpreters or um, c careers working with deaf people. Okay, yeah. well, this has been. Wonderful to have you all on the TIP television show. So thank you so much for being here. Jim, of course, thank you for helping us. But we hope that you come back for many more shows because this is just fantastic what sure. you do. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. From everyone thank here you. at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.